Hi, I'm Jason and I'll be presenting our CDC paper, Robust Control Bearer for Vital Functions for Safety Critical Control. This work is done by myself, Dongon Lee, Kaushal Surinas, Claire Tomlin, and Sylvia Herbert. The main motivation of this work is to use a vault function-based approach to solve a control problem that has to satisfy a safety constraint. A vault function can be constructed by combining the knowledge of the desired safety constraint and how it is affected by the long-term evolution of the dynamics. These are combined into a single scalar function. Usually, its level can serve as a measure of the safety margin, and its gradient in the state space provides us the safety direction to which we want to derive our system state. hamilton jacobi reachability analysis and control bear functions are the two of the popular methods in the safety control community that uses this notion of valve functions. The main goal of our work is to bridge the gap between these two methods. Towards this end, we propose a new notion of a valve function called robust control barrier valve function, which merges the characteristics of these two methods. With the new concept of the CBBF, we provide the reachability community a new systematic way of designing a safety filter that can resolve the issue of common jerky behaviors of the conventional least restrictive controller. For the CBF community, we believe that our work can serve as a constructive method for designing valid CBFs that can recover maximal safe region and that is also robust to bounded disturbance. In this presentation, I'll quickly give an overview of the previous two methods, highlight their pros and cons, and then we'll introduce the new concept of the CBVF. Finally, I'll end this talk by introducing some future work directions. As a basic setup, we use F as the vector fields for the system dynamics, X as the system state, U as the control input, and D as the disturbance that can be applied to the system adversarially. We assume that U and D are both bounded. In the hamilton jacobi reachability framework, safety control can be translated into a reachability problem whose objective can be described as optimal control. In this diagram, we denote large L as our desired safety region, which is the white space in the center, and the blue region as the failure region. We can use a sign distance function, small lx, to represent the safe set as its zero super level set. Now, in order to solve for the optimal safety control, we first set the failure region as the target set and solve for its inevitable backward reachable tube, which includes the states that are inevitable to reach the unsafe set regardless of the control effort. Once you computed the valve function, basically you have solved for this inevitable backward reachable tube, and then the complement of the set will be the set of states from which you can render this trajectory safe. This set is typically called as the viability kernel. Solving for the BRT valve function involves solving a specific partial differential equation called hamilton jacobi variational inequality, which is presented here. This is derived from the dynamic programming principle of the valve function. Let's take a closer look at the variational inequality. Since you take the minimum of the two terms in the right, the second term is always greater or equal to zero. Under the optimal policy of the valve function, denoted as pi v star, According to the chain rule, this is the derivative of the valve function along the optimal trajectory. Therefore, we can derive that under the optimal control, V is always non-decreasing. This property of the valve function ensures that safety preservation that we wanted. However, it comes as a great cost that the optimal trajectory is very conservative because we never allow the trajectory to get closer to the safety boundary. Therefore, using this optimal policy itself directly as a safety filter is often impractical. To mitigate this conservatism, the reachability community often uses this optimal control in a least restrictive way. It switches to the optimal safety controller only when safety is at stake, in other words, when the state is too close to the boundary of the viability kernel. For instance, consider this ex simple example of a Dubin's car starting at the initial state in the red cross, trying to reach the target green point with some reference control signal while passing by a black circular obstacle. The optimal safety control is applied only when the valve function is close to zero, which means when it is very close to the obstacle. In this way, the resulting trajectory is not conservative. 
However, the resulting control profile is often very jerky because of the repeated switches between the nominal controller and the safety controller. Now I will give a brief introduction to control rare functions. Let be x a continuously differentiable valve function in the state space, and let its zero super level set be c. Then bx is a CBF if everywhere in set c there exists a constant gamma such that there exists a control that makes this resulting b dot plus gamma b greater or equal to zero. The main property of the CBF that makes it useful for safety control is that the zero super level set c can be rendered forward invariant by the control signal that satisfies this inequality condition. The role of gamma here is that it serves as a maximal discount rate of the CBF value bx. Informally, bx is not allowed to decay faster than this exponentially decaying curve b dot equals minus gamma times b. It means that the profile of b is never allowed to touch the zero value if it started from a positive value and potential unsafe behaviors smooth out as the trajectory approaches to the boundary of the set C. For the comparison between the reachability analysis and the control bear functions introduced so far, I want to highlight two main takeaways. First is that the CBF's forward invariant set, which is its zero super level set C, should be contained in the infinite time viability kernel S infinity, because S infinity is the maximal control invariant set contained in the desired safety region. Second, if the corresponding value function v infinity from the reachable analysis is differentiable, it directly satisfies the definition of CBFs with any positive value of gamma. However, if v infinity is non-differentiable, it implies that the CBF C set C is a strict subset of S infinity. For more details, please refer to our paper. To sum up what we discussed so far, we have seen that the hamilton jacob reachability can be useful for constructing a safety valve function from scratch. However, the online deployment of the computed valve function is not straightforward. As we saw in this example, the behaviors of the op optimal policy or the least restrictive controller. On the other hand, the CBF provides a nice behaving controller that can be effectively used as online safety filter, which is induced from the inequality condition in its definition. However, the overall safe set in which the system is allowed to stay is often restrictive. Moreover, the definition of the CBF itself is not constructive, so in practice, hand-designed CBFs are often used. In light of this comparison, now we present our main contribution, the new notion of a valve function called control barrier valve function. Recall that in the original hamilton jacob reachability, the conservatism of the optimal policy was mainly coming from the valve function's property that it is not allowed to decrease in time. On the other hand, in the CBF definition, this was resolved by allowing the CBF to decrease, but just not as fast as an exponentially decaying curve. The main idea of the CBVF is really simple, which is that we introduce the maximal decay rate gamma to the reachability valve function as well. Formally, the CBVF is defined as the below optimal control valve function. Although I will not go into the details of the math, I want to highlight that the main difference from the original reachability valve function is the introduction of this multiplicative penalty term that exponentially increases over time. When gamma equals zero, B0 becomes exactly the same as the original reachability valve function. The resulting dynamic programming principle expressed as the hamilton jacobi variation inequality, aka CBVFVI, has this additional term compared to the hamilton jacobi variation inequality of the original value function. Again, note that the first two terms in the second block inside the mean corresponds to the time derivative of the value function along the trajectory. Therefore, by observing the fact that the second block is greater or equal to zero, we get the following result. Under the optimal policy of B gamma, the profile of B gamma always satisfies this inequality condition under any bounded disturbance, which looks exactly the same as the CBF constraint. 
What we have done is that we have relaxed the conservative safety constraint of the original reachability value function, just like the CBFs, but we are still preserving the same safety guaranteeing property of the value function. The nice property of the CBVF compared to the original reachability formulation is compared in this example. This is a simple double integrator whose safety constraint is to stay in this big green circle. The reference control signal is trying to reach a target green point here. However, as you can see in the first row, the original value function's optimal control precludes us from reaching the target point because it wants to maximize safety and the value function is not allowed to decrease. As you introduce the maximal decay rate gamma and the corresponding control barrier value function, you can resolve this conservativeness. The trajectory under the CBVF's optimal policy is allowed to reach the target point because as you can see in this plot, the value function B gamma is now allowed to decrease as long as it satisfies the CBF style inequality condition. Finally, for the online synthesis of the optimal control signal, we verified that for systems of fine in control and disturbance, it can be done by solving a quadratic program called CBVFQP. The inequality in this quadratic program ensures that even under the worst case disturbance, the optimality condition of the CBVF is still satisfied. This QP can be used directly as a safety filter, just like the CBFQP, and there's no need to do least restrictive control anymore. As you can see in this demo, with the CBVFQP, Compared to the least restrictive safety control law, it has a much smoother control profile that would work much better in practice. To sum up, in this paper, we introduced a new notion of a safety value function called control barrier value function, which is an extension of the original hamilton jacob reachability based value function's definition by introducing a maximal decay rate gamma to the formulation. The current ongoing extension of our work is an extension of the CBVF to the infinite time horizon semi. We think that similar to how we merged reachability and CBVFs, we can merge the theory of reachability and CLFs. Finally, since the numerical methods in the hamilton jacobi literature for computing the CBVFs are computationally heavy, we think that resolving this issue is also very important to see the usage of CBVFs in various practical high-dimensional systems. For example, we are interested in using one sort based reachability computation or using deep learning based approximations of the value functions. Thank you for listening to my talk, and questions are greatly welcomed.